Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Kenny Hack. In this video it's going to be another full walkthrough, so it's going to be kind of a long one. I'll try to leave a little time code breakdown of the different parts of this video down in the description below. So if you want to re-watch something or skip over something that you feel you're conf confident in, you can go ahead and do that. But now... For this video, I'm trying a couple new things that I haven't done on any of my previous videos. The first one is, is we're going to be using borax as a pre-treatment. This is kind of along the same lines as that aging stain I use and like the baking soda pre-treatment. Uh, this is just using borax. You can find this at a lot of your big hardware stores, kind of an old cleaning product. Stuff is very easy to make. Um, so kind of to get started with making this stuff all i do is get a large spoon and i'll fill that up about level full it doesn't take very much of this borax i kind of make it in a one-time use batch if you make the a big batch of this stuff it kind of after as it settles and sits for a while it'll kind of crystallize back into the borax it will come out of solution it seems like so you kind of just want to make a one-time use uh, portion of this and after you're done you can just dump it out. So what I do is I fill up a spoonful and get hot water as hot as your tap will go and I'm only filling up my little solo cup about maybe a quarter full so it's not even probably a half a cup of hot water. Put in your spoonful and stir it in. It'll kind of make a cloudy mixture. And after that, to prep your wood, you're gonna wanna sand your wood off with like 200 grit plus, get it pretty smooth, wipe it off. And you're just gonna take your mixture and take like a paper towel and evenly wipe it onto the whole board. Like make sure you really get the edges good Spend a few minutes kind of wiping it around, trying to get an even coating. And then, and you're going to want to do both sides of your board. One is going to, like, the back side will be your practice side to run some practice test strips to check your settings. And then you'll burn your final image on the front. Now, if you're using a live edge board like these uh, basswood boards that you get at Hobby Lobby, these live edges burn very dark like where it's this darker brown edge it, these burn very easy and turn black very easy so I generally just cover them up with a strip of masking tape just as best as you can just lay it along that edge it'll make for a nice clean burn line so after you put on your borax you can just take a blow dryer and blow dry dry it doesn't have to sit it's, it's not a requirement that it has to soak into the wood for a long time you're just getting them fine bore, dissolved borax particles down inside the wood drain so it, it doesn't have to sit for 24 hours and naturally dry you can just take a blow dryer get it dry and you're ready to go but when you do get done blow drying it if you feel the wood, it'll have kind of a gritty texture to it. You kind of can feel like a little borax film on there. Just take your hand and wipe it off until it's back to smooth feeling again. If you leave all that residual borax on there, it's just going to burn to soot. And then when you go to clear coat or blow dry it, all that soot that might look like it has details is just going to brush off. It's not embedded enough into the wood grain. So you want to make sure you clear off that extra borax off the surface. And this here is kind of the project we're going to be going over like step by step that I made. Kind of a Ready Player One. Kind of a, one of my favorite, newer favorite shows from the last few years. Really gets into the 80s and 90s. Uh, sci-fi stuff that I really like. If you watch my channel, it's a lot of old sci-fi stuff I go over. And as you can see, when you mask off that edge, it really makes that edge pop. These boards aren't really that great for doing sci-fi images. These are probably more for like wedding photos, anniversary photos, memorial photos, hunting photos that kind of lend themselves a little more to the natural wood look. But 
I had it laying around and I really like using these boards. So that's what I burned it on. But if you're just new to getting, if you're kind of new and starting out making images, maybe look into MDF. This stuff also works very well on MDF. This is kind of some practice pieces. I was helping another guy who actually is from in Africa. He was needing some help doing images. So I was trying to, and they have a little more access to MDF as kind of a wood they can get down in Africa. A little more available than stuff like uh, that basswood. They just can't get it down there. So I was trying to show them that you can do pretty nice images even on basswood. And this is how natural bass or natural MDF will burn. This was at about a 3000 speed, 80% power. And it, it looks fairly good, but like a lot of the details will get washed out. And you can spread that borax onto this surface and it doesn't really look like it's soaking in very much. It just looks like you're barely getting the surface wet and you'll wipe it off the same way. But as you can see, it now goes from like a sepia color to a nice black image. And you'll get much better details, much better shading using the borax. And M I really like using MDF. It's good for painted projects and it's also good just practicing your image work. And you can try different settings to see what uh, dithers you like. You can see how the brightness and contrast, you can make little test strips of the image and makes little subtle changes and you kind of can see how they're going to come out. And so if you're just getting started, I suggest getting one of these, cut it down into one foot by one foot practice squares and make little test boards. And you can make final images on it and then just cut off any excess to down to the full photo size. I really like using this stuff. It's pretty versatile. And something else I'm doing different on this video, instead of using light burn, I'm going to be using laser gerbil or laser GRBL, I'm not really too sure of the phonetics of it, of how it's supposed to be pronounced. I'm pretty new to laser gerbil. I haven't used it very much, hardly at all. I've only done about three or four images. Um, kind of the reason I had to go to laser gerbil is I got the new Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro, and it works really great, but I got, got one of the early pre-release models, and I don't think this glitch is kind of happens to most people. I've, I've talked to a few other people in the forums that have this glitch with the Pro that when it's doing images, as it's going, it'll slowly start to skew the image over and everything will start shifting over on the X axis. And for a lot of wood, it, it's not that big a deal. I'd be able to put it in and then just kind of cut like a quarter inch of excess off each side to square it back up. But occasionally there's some pieces where I need all the image right up to the edge, like some key parts of the image are right on the edge and I don't want to have to cut them off. So yeah, I tried to get a laser gerbil onto my computer for a long time and it just, I just could never get it to download. I finally was able to get it to download a copy so I could give it a try. And I'll kind of be going through my first impressions of using that program. It's a free program versus Lightburn. Things I do like about it, things that, are, you know, you're, it's a free program, so it's not going to have quite all the bells and whistles that Lightburn has. But some of the simplicity of it also makes it pretty nice for doing some things. I really like how it does images. And it's just another tool to put in your bag of tools to have available if you need to use it in the future. You know, you don't always want to get locked into one program, one way of doing things. Find out if something works better than something else for certain kinds of projects, and then you'll have that as a, another available option. So let's go back over to the computer. I'll show you how I get the images prepped and kind of the basic stuff I can kind of do in Laser Gerbil for now. I, like I said, I'm still new to it. I'm sure I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes and don't have the best. Uh, shortcuts to get things done but i'm kind of show you where i'm at for right now for only being a user of it for like a week or two now so let's move on over to the computer okay here we got uh, the original image brought into gimp you know you can use whatever photo editing software you're useful used to this is just what i'm used to 
But the first thing I like to do is I'll go to image mode. And I'll change it to grayscale so I can kind of see how it looks black and white. And you can make editing stuff in here and change the brightness, contrast, and all that stuff. I'm not really going to go over that in this video. That'll be kind of up to you to play with. But the first thing I'm going to do is the board I'm working with, I want the image to be 9 inches by 13 inches. So the first thing we're going to do is go to image, and first we're going to scale the image. We'll leave it at 300 resolution. We'll go to inches just because that's what I'm working with. And we'll go to 9 inches wide. And not, this image is automatically going to scale to 16 inches. We're going to cut 3 inches off of it to fit the board. So first we'll scale it. We mostly want to keep the width. Now I'll go back to image. Go to canvas size. Go back to inches. Now you'll see this little indi icon here, how it's uncoupled. That means it'll change. you can change one part or the other, and it won't change the aspect ratio. If you close it, now if I change one, it'll change the other. I only want to change the height from to 13 inches. And so now you can come down here. And you can slide it around. You can pick kind of where you want to crop the image off. And we want to make sure he keeps his fist in there. And we kind of can get rid of a lot of this dark area at the bottom. That's not really going to turn out well on the laser anyways. So we'll be happy there. We'll go to resize. And you can see here now it's cropped down to where we want. And basically that's all you really need to do to get an image ready for laser gerbil inside a GIMP. So we'll just save that as uh, name it. And I usually like to put the, how big a file size it is. Like it's a 9 inch by 13 inch. So I know if in the future if I want to put something on another piece of wood, I know how big it is. And that is probably that it's 300 DPI. I usually put all of that up into the description that I name it as. And then just go to export as. And we'll call it like ready player one. It'll be a 9 by 13, 300 DPI. Save it as a JPEG or export it as a JPEG. And then just hit export. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to make some test strip parts. Now like these are things you're going to kind of demo on the back. And you're, you're kind of want to pick out like very the key details that you want to make sure are turning out as, as good as you can get them and so what i like to usually do is pick out faces and like places that have a lot of transition from light to dark so we're going to make two different test piece test swatches on this image so once again we'll go to image canvas size and we'll make a vertical one and a horizontal one so we'll keep the width the same, and we'll take the height down to, say, like just 0.5, just a half an inch is all we're really needing. Kind of tough to see here, but we're going to drag it across until we're kind of looking across two of the characters' faces. And we'll make sure we're going to try to make, play around with all the detail settings until we get their faces looking pretty good. So there we go, kind of got a little test swatch where we can get good clear images of both of their faces and make sure those details are turning out. And we'll go ahead and save that file like as a test strip and kind of with the same name, just put test strip in the title. And once you got that file saved, we'll open it back up. And now we'll get a vertical test strip. So this one will change in that direction. And once again, you're going to, I like to get the, the subject faces. If you're doing like a portrait, I, I zoom in kind of more on the eyes. Like I always feel if you can get the really good detail in port, the eyes of a portrait, the rest of it is kind of minor details. That's the part you really want to turn out the best. So we'll scale another one to there. 
and this will kind of be our vertical test strip and save that as another test strip file and that's what we'll start off burning with first you can kind of make some quick changes burn this little half inch part of this little half inch strip and see how it's come turning out so now let's uh, go ahead and go over to laser gerbil so now here we are in laser gerbil we're just going to go to open file and we'll find one of our little test strips so we'll just open that up and this here is where you can kind of play around and maybe try a bunch of different settings if you're just starting out with images you can find out which dithers you like and I never use stuff like image R. I kind of like to set all the at the parts to my for myself instead of just hoping that image R is going to come up with the right setting. But here, this here is kind of where I'm at right for now. I haven't been able to play with all these different settings, but the one I kind of like starting off with, uh, I just set it to the one bit black and white dithering. Set it on Jarvis horizontal. Use 10 lines per millimeter, which is basically 254 DPI. You can bump that up, but I found on wood with this borax how easy it burns. If I raised up the DPI on wood anymore, I was starting to kind of get a little burn overlap. You could start seeing some little black lines form across the image as it was burning, where like the laser was kind of overlapping itself. So at 10, it seemed to stay pretty clean. And I leave it on the smooth HQ, high quality B by cubic. And then you can rotate it here, set it any way you want. Or set up there. You can see your original views. You can see the, the dither preview. Now I've had good luck with Jarvis, Atkinson, and Sierra too. I was pretty happy with all three of them. I thought all three of those produced pretty good image quality on wood. I haven't got to try the Norton white tile method to see which one I like best on there. And also Stucky. That's also another one that I see used by a lot of people. So those are kind of maybe the first four to start playing around with. See which one you like. And what maybe works really good with one image, like for a big blowing up portrait, might not work as well as like with this image that has a lot of smaller faces in it. You know, that's... Don't just get stuck on one and just say that's always going to be the best. Always try a couple test strips out and see what works, what looks best for this image. So once you get there, we'll stick with them settings. We'll go next. This here is where you can set the speeds, set the power. Now, I can't say 100% for sure. I've, I've heard people talk about it that using laser gerbil, especially with these orteurs that you know they were designed to use with laser gerbil, that you seem to get a little more power out of the laser versus using light burn and I kind of agree with that like I I tried both of them and it seemed like at the same power setting I was getting a little darker image using laser gerbil versus using light burn you know that's going to be kind of up to some debate I'm sure people wouldn't agree everywhere but this is here is kind of a good place to start like I said you're going to want to burn a bunch of test strips and like right now we've got everything set we know the inches there the size is nine inches which comes out to oh this isn't going to be back exact but it's about 224 millimeters and once you got that set any other image you drag in will stay that size so we'll just go next or create and where laser gerbil is a lot different than light burn it it, it kind of generates all the g-code before you can get started so that you know light burn it goes pretty fast laser gerbil does take a little bit here to create the file but what I do like about laser gerbil is down here in the bottom it says how long it's gonna take an estimated time for it to burn that image and 
as you play around, you, you might find like it starts off at six minutes, but once it gets going, that might extend up to like seven or eight minutes, just depending on if it's buffering to have to burn the image or not, if it's slowing it down. So all you have to do is come up here, click connect to your laser. Now you'll see here I had mine to set up here about 260 millimeters off the origin. So we can just, now that it's homed, we'll click to the corner. You'd go to your wood piece. You can hit focus. That'll turn on your laser beam and then you can kind of get your board centered up where it's over line of the deal now over on this corner you can kind of set your speed and your distance and then you can just step the laser over manually until it's at the corner make sure it's overhanging the edge of your work and it's going to on mine so we're good there. You can also just put your cursor on a point of portion of the image and double click and the laser will move to that point. So that's a good way to frame in your work and make sure everything's going to stay where you centered and not to, you know, and overlap your masking tape. So it'd be good to run right there. And but this wood I've got in my uh deal. I haven't treated this one at all yet. I'm not gonna really burn this sound. This was kind of a demo piece for the video. I'll just show you how my demo piece has turned out. So this here was all the demos I ran. And I, was, I tried all the different dithers I could. Like I said, I was pretty happy with Atkinson, Jarvis, Stuckey, Sierra 2. I thought they all did fairly good. You can see I tried the horizontal pieces. I made another test strip vertically. You can, uh, there was a test strip going right down the middle. And I just kept making setting changes until I was happy with how it looked and then set the image to burn and this one took a uh, right around two and a half hours i think at like seven thousand speed a couple hours so it wasn't bad so once you got your test strips that you're happy with now just imp open up the full file And wherever you had ended up with your settings, the settings will stay there. So that's pretty nice. Like if you got all your test strip work done, just leave everything where you had it. And you can come to the next part. And this here is where you set the offset from the origin. Like I can't have it up there 260 millimeters. I'll move that back to like 20 millimeters offset. And it's going to keep the 224 width and let's see how that goes so we'll go to create and this here is where I said it, it takes a little longer it has to create all the g-code before you can send it to the laser 
and this is where laser gerbil is quite a bit slower than light burn. Light burn, once you got everything set, you just hit play and it starts going. So even before it's loaded, I can go to the corner, it knows where it's at, hit your focus button to turn your laser on, come down in here, get it set where it's overhanging the tape and the bottom edge. Say, okay, it's set there. Now go to the top right corner, and you kind of can see, like right there, the laser came off of the board. It came off of where my tape would have been for this piece, so I want to move it over, and it's coming up a little short. We're not really going to burn this one, but you can see how kind of the square up just keep going around doing all four corners until you get it to where everything's going to stay on the on the board you can see there it's not quite so i maybe have to blow this image up a little bit bigger to actually fit onto this board but that's kind of how i get my image centered up you just keep clicking around going corner to corner until it's going to stay on the on the workpiece, and I can go ahead and set this to burn. It's not going to burn anything on my lay on the wood because I haven't treated this piece of wood, and at the speed I'm running, I highly doubt it's going to burn anything. It's going to run. It might end up burning a little bit down here on the natural wood on the dark edge because that stuff burns super easy. But other than that, that's basically it. It's pretty simple to work laser gerbil. It's only a few little settings you kind of got to figure out. And other than that, I think the image work is pretty top quality for a free program. And as you can see, I think when it started, I started, it was like a minute 24. And as it's going, this time is just going to keep moving up a little more, a little more. There's, as it's going, there's certain areas that it's just takes, makes the laser module work a little harder than it thought. And it can't quite run full speed. So it slows it down a little bit. And it'll end up right around two hours. But. For a 9 inch by 13 inch piece, that's not too bad. Here's what got me thinking about Ready Laser 1. So while I was burning on one of my demo pieces for the, with this image, I was actually burning some drink tokens for a client of mine over on Laser 2. So that one's making money, and this one over here is just burning for fun. So here's the final image, and if you notice, like on my settings, I actually had to turn the contrast down a bit. These light, there are so much light details in this, and to get them to actually come out, I had to move the contrast down, and that darkens up your light tones, but lightens up your dark tones. So it was kind of why I had to burn so many test strips. I was trying to find that balance where I could get the lighter tones to come through without washing out my darker details and if you hold on a little bit i'll have a kind of more close-up view video view of the final image so you can kind of see how some of the details turned out and get a little closer look at it this is what i used to clear coat the project after it's done is triple thick crystal clear glaze by krylon i've had some other good products but i really like that this one has a really nice spray tip on it doesn't glob up as much and it will slightly stain the wood a darker color.
color but as it dries it seems to lighten up a little bit more than some of the other products i've used so so far i'm pretty happy with this uh, clear glaze to seal in all the details now here's a close-up of the details and when you're applying that clear coat the first couple coats put on very thin just barely get a layer on there power dry it put another layer on power dry it and just keep building up very thin layers if you put it on too thick right at the start the thin the glaze will actually dissolve some of your details and the more the lighter the coat you put on the less it seems to dissolve it you can kind of build up a protective layer well that's it we're finally through it hope you found something useful in this tutorial please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh see you on the next video